Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about how to power a community, or more or less, how to make a Minecraft power station. This is modeled on the needs of Nebris's um, power station in the Minecraft server, but this should pretty much cover anyone else's needs as well. Um, basically what we have here is a power setup. This is a power generator, Quantum. It's a cheat generator for admins only. Uh, you shouldn't use it, it's cheating. It generates 350 EU, toggleable, but uh, we're just having it 350, and packet sizes of whatever you want. It doesn't matter, as I've established, packet size doesn't determine power output. Um, here we have a setup of eight MFSUs, some drained, some filling. Um, they're being currently drained mostly right now. Um, and basically why I have eight MFSUs, which can output 4,000 EU a second, versus or a tick versus this which only outputs 350 is because in a community what you need the most is power to be on demand um, you don't actually need to generate as much power as you might think because people don't use their machines all the time and if you have a constant power source that generates then you won't really need to have as much power as you need to be able to draw out so uh, this might be a little more power than would need to be drawn out 4000 total EU is pretty huge uh, but this is just kind of an example of you want a lot of power storage. I don't think you need this much, but you want a lot. This is kind of what I would think you would do for about 30 or so houses or if you were going to try to power them all. But there's no exact math on exactly what ratio you should use. Use as much as you can get away with uh, comfortably. You're going to want a lot of power though. And uh, let me switch the time back. Hopefully, ah. Yeah. I have this weird time glitch where I have to do this. There we go. Should be getting brighter now. Basically, you want to have enough power coming in that if everyone in the entire area is using power all at once, you can uh, have them have the power. Now, I want to quickly show off over here this transformer setup I have. This is basically going to what I would say the community power system is. This is where I'd put like all of your. Uh, machines that you want just anyone to be able to come in and use. I have a mace raider here with a bunch of upgrades <coughs> and an MFSU so people can charge up lap packs or jet packs or whatever else they want they can charge it there mining lasers. In here I have the transformers that limit it. This limits the power to 512 because it is a uh, what's it called a medium voltage transformer and so this can only take in 512 EU a tick. I have to use four low voltage transformers because they can each only output 128 EU a tick as I've covered in a previous video. I'm probably going to include a link because I mentioned this that video several times. And that gives this whole system 512 EU but at 32 EU a packet which means I don't need a transformer upgrade in this overclocker I can just use overclockers and it can take all the power it likes as well as this can receive as much power as it needs. <coughs> And uh, this is kind of how I would set it up. It just takes a small little room, and you can convert all the power onto nice 32 EU, which is good for 40 blocks. But what if you want to send power more than 40 blocks away? Well, that's kind of what this is. Now, I realize this isn't 40 blocks, but let's pretend this is like 200 blocks, for just good measure. This would be the line you'd run out to all of your uh, community houses and you know under all the streets and plug up into their homes. However though you don't want to just let them have access to all the power. Someone might just hook up a mass fabricator and drain your entire power system dry. Or even if they put an MFSU on this it's going to drain as much power as it can pull out of there and you don't want that. You don't want to lose all your power to people plugging it straight into the line. So what I have here is a medium voltage transformer again plugged into a low voltage transformer and I have these spreads, uh, spread apart so you can see plug the that you plug it into the three dot for the incoming power and then down here into the three dot again for the incoming power and this is going to make it so that when someone puts something up here it can only draw 128 EU a tick and that will help kind of limit the power draw of individual homes honestly if someone needs more than 128 EU uh, 128 EU a tick, they probably need their own power system and shouldn't be mooching off the communities. Um, so that's kind of how I would set it up. If you want to limit this further, you could place a bat box here instead and uh, basically limit them to 32 EU a tick, uh, but that's kind of uh, painful because you can't really use much on 32 EU. 
But, as you can see, this is kind of how I have my little setup. Now you might be wondering, well, what about power loss over distance? Should I convert this to high voltage? Uh, no, you should not, or not high voltage, extreme voltage. And no, you should not convert to extreme voltage. Extreme voltage requires the use of high voltage cabling, which has a horrible power loss rate. It loses power every three blocks, I want to say. Glass fiber, on the other hand, loses power every four blocks or 40 blocks. So you can run 200 blocks and only lose 5 EU. Um, and what this equates to is you lose about 1% of your power uh, for 200 blocks, which is nothing. You don't actually quite even lose 1%. So uh, this, is, this is extremely efficient cabling. It is a little expensive, but uh, a little known recipe that most people don't see if you see the shape crafting things, you can actually click this next page icon. And if you actually skip all the way to the end, look at that. Eight glass fiber caber cable with just diamond. Um, it takes diamond dust, industrial diamonds, or whatever. But it takes this electrium ingot. You might be wondering what that is. All that is, is... Let me actually find the dust. And then here, again, go to more pages. Look, silver and gold dust. That's it. Silver and gold dust. Most people already use the silver dust or silver ingots anyways, but combine silver and gold dust and you get two dust, which will get you two ingots, and that will get you a glass fiber cable. Um, it will get you eight of them, which means that you can now go a lot farther, because like, I believe the default recipe is only four. Yeah. You can go twice as far for the same amount of diamonds just by mixing gold and silver, which are actually pretty common uh, for most people since gold doesn't have as many uses and silver has very few uses. So yeah, use that recipe and glass fiber cable is the way to go. Um, the EU loss is much better over long distance. Um, converting to high voltage costs diamonds anyways because you have to use transformers that take diamonds. And so you're just better off using this unless you, you know, want to go like a thousand blocks and the diamond cost would just be prohibitive and you have a m butt ton of iron. I mean, you'd have to have so much iron to go a thousand blocks. Then maybe. But uh, otherwise, stick to glass fiber. Now, over here, I have the mass fabricator ah sorry matter fabricator uh, I'm so used to IC2 and uh, its power is limited right over here by a medium voltage transformer that's plugged directly into a low voltage transformer which then runs over to it and it only gets to pull 128 EU same as the houses and uh, this is about half of my power buildup that I can do and uh, this is either good or bad, depending on how you look on it. But uh, basically, it doesn't drain all your power, but it does drain some of your power that you're able to produce. Um, the most advanced way of doing this, actually, would be to... Uh, you see this redstone little thing up here? It glows blue when I highlight over it. If I click it, you'll see in the thing, now it emits if full. Click it again, emit if partially filled. Click it again, emit if empty. Click it again, do not output energy all little things you can do. Um, what you can do is you can basically set this to uh, emit if full and if it's filled you can have a line running underneath it um, uh, underneath these uh, MFSUs, dig out underneath them, put a redstone line and then you can run it over to one of these guys the uh, mass fabricator and uh, or not run to the mass fabricator, to the low voltage transformers. And uh, if you power these trans these low voltage transformers, it'll want to send power the other direction. And uh, since it can't, I'll get some redstone. Never have the exact item I always want on me. So many items. If you power it, it should stop the power being able to go through. See, zero EU a tick. So you can basically use this thing to emit redstone, your MFSUs, when they're full and turn this little thick guy off so that basically when these are full this will turn off and thus the in the matter fabricator will be able to drain power. Um, so this is only if you want to limit your power um, consumption completely and basically only use UU matter whenever you're at absolutely full power. But this isn't exactly optimal, so I wouldn't recommend it because you won't need it to always be at full power for the system. 
Uh, you can do it if you'd like, but uh, I find it easier just to let it stay on longer and uh, basically only make it so when empty, uh, so have them all if they're empty. So if any one of these bottoms out and hits empty, it will turn this off if you do that same setup. And that to me seems like the uh, optimal way of doing it. Uh, I should bother to actually show how you would uh, wire it up. So let me go digging under here. Blah, 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 blah. This color coding actually is pretty helpful now. So I've got my MFs guys right here. So let's put that there. And I don't even have redstone dust on me, do I? Uh, let's see. Let's get some redstone dust. And I don't even have space for it. There we go. So dust, and I know there's red power stuff. I'm going to get into that stuff all in its good time, but that will be later. So get that. Run like that. And so this is what you do. You just take a power line. You'd run it this way, and then... Uh, where is it? Should have planned this out. Okay, there we go. Take a power line, run it like this. Put dust here, and I believe this would work. Uh, or do I need to invert that? I think I need to invert it. <sighs> Why is redstone so complicated? Uh, to invert, I'd want to go like that. Run the redstone dust to here. Oh, I need to have it going into it. So I need to go like this. See, this is why I don't play with redstone too much. <laughs> it's so much, so much more work to get it to go exactly how you want it. So run the dust like this. Make sure you run it into the block to power it. Get more redstone torches because we're out again. Like that. Now it should be inverted. Now where's my escapey hole? Oh, it's nighttime again. So there we go. Invert. Okay. I think that's correct. So basically, when this red power li when this get line of redstone gets powered, this torch set up will invert, turning this torch on, meaning that if this is empty, this will cut power to this guy. All right. So uh, thank you for watching, everyone. That's how I would set up my uh, community power system with a mass fabricator, community power center, and homes. Thank you, everyone.